known locally as the Cotton Mills Derby or more exotically El Lang Classico which actually to be fair with my sunnies on does feel a bit El Classico-ish today. Yeah El Lang Classico is the derby that is played between Blackburn Rovers and Burnley and yeah the Cotton Mills Derby so Blackburn and Burnley historically are two huge cotton mill towns and um, yeah they were rivals off the pitch in that they were battling for contracts for yeah their cotton mills back centuries ago and uh, yeah that was only accentuated through when the two football teams were formed and obviously being so local and the fact they had the cotton mills rivalry as well the two football teams when they came together the rivalry was heightened ever more head to head they played each other over a hundred times the first being in 1888 and the scores are pretty even with Blackburn winning 41 Burnley winning 42 and there being 19 draws but yeah like I say less of the cotton mills derby more of El Lang Classico look at this you don't come to Blackburn and expect to have your sunnies on and have weather like this but yeah let's go take a look around Ewood Park and then I'll take you over to Burnley's home turf moor. Look, as you can see, terraced housing stadium. It is one of those Northern English football clubs that is uh, in and around the houses of the people, making it easy for the local residents to come and watch the game. And that's a hark back to, uh, to older times when there wasn't public transport and stuff like that. And talking about older times, both Blackburn and their local rivals Burnley were founding members of the Football League. The great Football League that is still in use today, the best Football League in the world. Blackburn were one of the original 12 teams, as were Burnley. Blackburn finished four in that first ever season a Champions League spot in today's money but obviously that wasn't a thing back then they play yeah they finished fourth whereas local rivals Burnley finished ninth <laughs> In terms of trophies, Blackburn do edge it against Burnley, and um, but that's not to take anything away from Burnley. They do also have an extremely prestigious past, and we will get into their trophies when we get down to Turf Moor in a second. But yeah, what about Blackburn? What have they won? Well, they've won three top-tier titles. The first was in 1912, the second in 1914, the third was in 1995, so like 80 years after basically the first two. And um, I will be telling you a little bit more about that in a little bit more detail in a second when we get around to a statue of someone very famous connected to Blackburn who um, I'm sure a lot of well, all the Blackburn fans would know of. But yeah, free league titles basically for Blackburn top tier titles. They've also won one second tier and one third tier as well. And they have won six FA Cups, two of which came against Queen's Park. I've mentioned this in my Queen's Park video before. I believe they are the only Scottish team to have ever reached the FA Cup final, the English FA Cup final. and. Um, yeah, Blackburn beat them twice on two occasions. Anyone from Scotland watching, please drop me a Queen's Park in the comments below. It would really make my day. Here we are, look, outside the Darwin End. And um, I actually have been in the Darwin End before. The Darwin River, of course, runs um, through this local area. And that's why the town, I believe, is called Darwin as well. And of course, the football team Darwin FC named after the town and the Darwin End here. Darwin is everywhere. And I have even been in the Darwin End before. For Blackburn v Liverpool, I think it was like 2012, maybe 2011. We won 3-2. Andy Carroll scored late header and uh, yeah just look at that what a, what a lovely stadium they have here at Blackburn so iconic so yeah six FA Cups five of them in the 1800s one of them was in 1928 and uh, none since then but yeah Blackburn did actually win the League Cup in 2002 they beat Spurs not at Wembley it was when it was at Cardiff when uh, yeah football at the home of England at Wembley was being redeveloped the stadium was being redeveloped of course and uh, yeah they beat Spurs at, uh, at Cardiff to win the League Cup in 2002 to add to their trophy cabinet. But yeah, I couldn't make a Blackburn Rovers video without talking about their 1995 Premier League winning team. And look who that is there, Jack Walker. He was a local businessman and a Blackburn Rovers fan. Jack Walker did what we all dream of. He bought his boyhood club. Not only did he buy his boyhood club, but he also won them the Premier League title with his investment and his good running of the club. Yeah, when he took over and when he bought the club here, look at this. 
right next to Ewood Park, like a statue of the great man himself. Yeah, when he took over, the Premier League had kind of only just really started and um, United were in full swing, Man United that is, and they were really asserting their dominance. However, yeah, he assembled a team with the original SAS, Shearer and Sutton up front. It also had Tim Sherwood, Colin Hendry, Graham Lasso, Tim Flowers, just to name a few. They all wrote their names into Blackburn Rovers folklore. They were part of his team. Obviously, Kenny Dalgleish was the manager as well. And um, they eventually, fittingly, went on to lift the title at Anfield on the last day of the season. One of the best last days of the season until probably like Aguero's in 2012. But yeah, it was a real um, title battle that day. United, I think, were at Upton Park and they didn't do enough to secure the win. Blackburn actually lost at Liverpool. But um, yeah, they still went on to win the league because I think United didn't score enough goals or didn't win or something like that yeah they basically didn't do enough and uh, Blackburn won the title Jack Walker achieved his dream of uh, bringing the league back to Blackburn here honestly it feels just unreal to create videos at new clubs again after being in lockdown for so long it was great to be out and to be at these clubs again but yeah just talking about Jack Walker there here he is here he also has a stand named after him and his statue I mean what a legendary bloke he uh, yeah brought the league title here it's a little bit reminiscent to Leicester's story I feel like and like obviously the people here at Blackburn love him as the owner as they did at Leicester with their owner of course the tragedy surrounding him and his helicopter is just horrendous but look you can actually see the pitch through there and uh, yeah like I was saying they um, they idolized Jack Walker here and what he did um, what he did for the club it's uh, it's tremendous and yeah he does have a stand named after him as well as his statue around the other side as well and there is just so much to see I think there's a cafe open around there Oh, Blackburn, it's good to be back. Please do remember to hit that like button. And if you are a Blackburn fan, I'm sure you know other people who are Blackburn supporters, friends of yours. Please do share this video, tweet it. I am on Twitter as well. I might pin a comment. So yeah, if you want to follow me, go down to the pinned comment. And uh, yeah, I'm there on Instagram and Twitter as well. Yeah, really appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah, now look back outside the front and the reception there of Ewood Park. What an amazing stadium, especially on a day like today. Look, the sky is blue and white, just like Blackburn Rovers. It's almost like it's meant to be. And as you can see on the badge there, look, Arte e Labore. It actually means by skill and hard work. And the club were formed in 1875, as you can also make out there from the badge. And uh, also on the badge, look, you can see the rose. The rose, a huge symbol of Lancashire. And um, yeah, between here and Turf Moor, we are about to head down to Turf Moor. I'm gonna try and find a rose just to show you that yes they are in the area and uh, it is a huge part look hang on there's one right here right next to the life-saving defibrillator look it's a huge symbol of the area and it's on the Blackburn badge as is their um as is their little phrase there in Latin which is actually really similar to the Darwin one I've literally just filmed a video at Darwin there I am hello please do remember to hit that like button but yeah look at that just been filming at Darwin a local non-league team who used to be huge rivals of Blackburn, probably not much anymore. I doubt a lot of people would know about the kind of history of Darwin and the old times of Blackburn Rovers. But yeah, look, 1875, what an old club. The f one of the founders of the Football League. Let's go and find ourselves a Lancashire Rose. And look at that, I finally found a rose on a bus stop sign here in between Blackburn and Burnley. now here at Turf Moor. I've never been here before and I love exploring new stadiums as you know and just look at this there's this little memorial garden here in memory of people who have died who are Burnley fans or war memorials and things like that and here is a memorial to Brian Miller it reads this memorial re recreates the famous image of Brian Miller prior to the Orient game on the 9th of May 1987 it was during this game that Brian successfully managed our club with a passion to win and a determination to survive that must not be forgotten setting us forth on our current journey player manager captain Mr Burnley himself and look at that yeah this little kind of mock dugout that they've made I absolutely love that is that from the old um, 
an old part of Turf Moor before redevelopment, I'm sure it might be. And yeah, just look at that, what a view. Let's go have a look around Turf Moor. And yeah, look, as you can see now, I'm outside Turf Moor. And again, what a beautiful day I'm having today. And there's like a cricket pitch through here. There's a wall of legends that I'm going to take you down in a second and uh, tell you more about the history of Burnley and stuff like that. And uh, the superstore, the club, shop is, the club shop is open as well. So maybe we'll go in there, have a look at the kits. But um, yeah, I just want to tell you a quick story about my relationship with Blackburn and Burnley. Not that I support either of them. I'm just saying that during like my childhood, like when I used to have sticker books of the Premier League and stuff like that, Blackburn were always in there and Burnley were always a League One or even a championship team and uh, yeah we're like tier two tier three and I'm sure this is the case with a lot of clubs up and down the land and like your era and when like you like, and how you kind of perceive them as like a big club I guess but to me growing up as a kid Blackburn were always bigger than Burnley and um, look that's not a dig at Burnley or anything like that like I say I, I don't have a horse in the race here but yeah for me growing up like I say Blackburn were always in the Prem and um, it was only with like the crappy takeover of the Venkies and stuff like that where you know Burnley started becoming sort of the bigger team out of the two and um, yeah certainly over the last five six years they've been Premier League stalwarts and not only that but Sean Dyche is the longest serving manager in the Prem just going to show what like an amazing job that he's done and I absolutely love this surrounding area of course a lot of you Blackburn fans will probably say you hate it or whatever but as a neutral on a lovely sunny day like this there is so much Burnley branding like all the businesses I'm not sure if you can see that over there I think it's like a car sales place or whatever is claret and blue there's boozers that are claret and blue as well and like yeah I just love the complete branding of this kind of area of Burnley to let you know that the football is really at the heart of the community here all along here this whole road now which uh, stretches beyond Turf Moor is our Turf Moor heroes, it's quite cool. Look, and this makes vlogging so much easier. Look, here's a man called Jerry Dawson, who uh, who played for Burnley, had 568 appearances here and played twice for England. He is the uh, first man on this wall of legends, as you can see. And the amazing thing about Jerry Dawson is that he holds the club appearance record, but it was the game that he didn't play in that made him famous, and that was the 1914 FA Cup final against, say it quietly, Liverpool. And yeah, here, look, more legends. Bert Freeman, another one, prolific goal scorer during his time at Turf Moor. And it was his goal against Liverpool which won them the FA Cup back in 1914. Even more legends here, Tommy Boyle. He captained the uh, 1914 FA Cup winning team after being wounded in World War I as well. He came back to fitness and uh, yeah, ended up winning and lifting the trophy for Burnley for their first and only time. His man called Bob Kelly, considered one of Burnley's finest ever players. He uh, was a record signing for a while for the Lancashire Combination Leagues of 275 pounds in 1913. And remember, this was a big, uh, a big milling town, of course, the cotton mills and stuff like that. These were working class men who probably would have worked in the mill and played football as well. Here's a man called Harry Potts. I believe I've just seen a street sign called Harry Potts Road or Harry Potts Way. I think this is Harry Potts Way. And uh, yeah, here he is. The man himself has a street named after him here in Burnley. So you know he must have been a legend. Well, he was 25 when he made his debut for the club after football restarted after the Second World War. And uh, yeah, he was a key player in the 40s, helping them uh, get to promotion. He was the leading goal scorer. He uh, had a reputation as a player to the ability to win penalties, but will always be best remembered for uh, as, his, as manager of the 1960 championship team. And a man who has a stand named after him here at the stadium, Jimmy McIlroy. I have heard of him before. He signed from Glen Torren in 1950, the Northern Irishman, and uh, yeah, was the star of the team in the 1960 uh, title winning season. Absolutely absolutely love that it makes vlogging so much easier when there's just like legends all up the wall with um with like explanations on who they are and stuff as well and yeah look here we go harry potts way up there lovely look right opposite turf moor Impressive size club shop here at 
um, Burnley at Turf Moor and uh, actually great to see uh, club shops back open again. There is the uh, Burnley kit for this season. I actually really like their kits, the old Clarent, Claret and Blue. And then the black and the yellow is a little bit garish for me, but I do love the home kit. And one of the staff members here in the club shop has just seen me filming and uh, has shown me this book here. All of the Clarets wins over Blackburn Rovers. We are, of course, talking about the Blackburn and Burnley rivalry today. So let's try and find the first match, shall we? Is this the first match here? 1891? I guess it might be. I guess it will be, yeah, look, at Turf Moor in the Football League. More recently in 2017 in the EFL Cup. Burnley won 2-0 at Ewood Park. So yeah, there you go, amazing stuff. Got every English Football League stadium on there on the map of the, of the British Army. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Yeah, look at that. Just as I was uh, leaving the club shop, the I think he was the manager or one of the workers in there, came and has given me a Burnley poster. It's got all the league clubs on, I think, or something like that. So absolutely buzzing. So welcoming. They couldn't have been nicer in there in the club shop. But um, yeah, whilst I was telling you about their so, kind of some of the legends on the wall, look, there's more here. Willie Irvin, a Northern Irishman, and more legends that line the walls all around Turf Moor, really. And um, yeah, a lot of them are from the 1960 championship winning season. And for the 1960-61 season, they obviously qualified for Europe, the European Cup. And for winning the league, yeah, they did um, qualify for Europe, and that was their first time in Europe, in the European Cup. And uh, sadly for them, they didn't get all the way to the final in the European Cup. I think they lost to Hamburg in uh, maybe the quarterfinals or the second round and um, had they have got all the way to the final they would have played a final a european final at switzerland's wankdorf stadium what a shame for burnley fans that they can't say they played at the wankdorf but there you go and yeah while we were just there on the subject of europe burnley did play like i say in the european cup in the early 1960s and then i believe the intercity fairs cup a little bit later in the 60s as well but um yeah they played twice in europe in the 60s and then wouldn't play europe in europe again until the 2018 19 season where Sean Dyche of course got them to finish seventh in the league and then yeah they qualified for the Europa League they beat Aberdeen in the second qualifying round Istanbul Bahak Bashak Shahir, I think, in the third qualifying round, and um, then eventually lost, uh, sadly, to Olympiakos in the playoff round, but could have got to the Europa League group stages if they'd have won that. But yeah, just look at that. What a beautiful little stadium this is. Well, not little, it's big, imposing structure like that. But yeah, a lovely stadium in these rural surroundings here. You really can't beat this. What a day for it. And look, you can still see the floodlights in down the road there in the distance and here is the Royal Daesh look I could not make a Burnley vlog and not bring you here this pub looks absolutely amazing they've renamed the pub the Royal Daesh in honor of Burnley's amazing manager Sean Daesh you couldn't make this up that is mad just look at that there he is like Henry VIII and look there, you should be able to see Turf Moor behind me in the distance, as well as some of the uh, old towers from the old mills, I guess they were. Remember this, it was a very working class area uh, back in the day when football was starting to get formed in the 1800s. And Burnley Football Club was for the people, for the working class, the same as Blackburn where we were earlier. But yeah, Burnley were formed in 1882 and by 1883, they were putting pressure on the FA to ensure that pay players could be paid professionalism was starting to creep into the game and these clubs wanted to be able to pay their players for the great work that they did on the pitch and um, yeah the old school the old guard the old Etonians and the old um, like posh people that used to run the game of football were also they didn't just run the clubs they also ran the FA they were the FA and to try and get these things passed was very hard and it was basically the working class people of these clubs against the amateur footballers of the upper class I guess you could say but yeah it was meant to be a gentleman's game played for leisure and um, eventually luckily um, it was turned in that you could start paying your players and um, yeah it was more inclusive then for the working classes as well as just that upper one percent but yeah like Blackburn Burnley were founding members of the Football League and in their first season they came ninth they were sandwiched in between Everton who were above them and Derby just below but yeah I really do hope you've enjoyed this video I love these Derby vids where I get to come and uh, investigate two teams i've seen two great stadiums in a fantastic county lancashire what a great place and um 
yeah, an amazing story of two football teams who are at the forefront of the football that we know today. They were, yeah, two founding members of the Football League. They were fighting for, like, equality, I guess you could say, for working-class people in, uh, in that they just wanted to be able to play football for themselves. I cannot wait to come back for a game here once fans are allowed. I definitely will come back to Burnley and Blackburn as well. So, yeah, please do remember to hit that like button. And also, a huge thank you to the legend in the club shop who gave me my poster. I can't wait to uh, get home and see what it looks like. Please, yeah, like I say, hit that like button. Subscribe if you aren't already. I'll leave some videos around my head as, as ever so you can keep watching my content. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.